Uh, it is a very special month. It is the well, a lot of things happen in the month of uh, April, but one of those uh, things that happens is it's Sexual Assault Awareness Month, uh, and uh, it's also help me, help child, me, Jen. Child Abuse Prevention Month. I knew, I knew Jen would know. <laughs> uh, and our conversation with the folks all about that brought to you by Marcus and Mac, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people from the care center. Jessica Clark is here. Uh, Jen McCroskey is with us. Uh, she's the sexual violence prevention educator uh, and with IUP's Haven Project. Uh, how would I do, Jen? Good. That was okay. correct. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley Fasarchik is here as well this morning. Hi, Ash. Hi, how are you? Uh, wonderful. Good to have you in the studio with us. Uh, um, well, well, ladies, this is a, a, a big, big month. And uh, let's start with you, Jess, because uh, you've got the pinwheel event coming up. It's, it's an annual event that's held at the courthouse. Yes. Uh, we are going to have our pinwheel uh, garden this Friday, April 5th at noon at the Indiana Courthouse. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be out in front with the county commissioners and all of our sponsors, and we are going to be planting our pinwheel garden um, like we do every year for the month of April. This is in honor of the children who have been affected by physical or sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. And uh, we love to use the pinwheel as a symbol of hope for these kids. We don't want it to be all doom and gloom because these kids can go on and live happy, productive lives. Mm -hmm. And people can actually purchase pinwheels. Yes. Uh, We are selling pinwheels um, through the whole month of April. If you go to our website, www.carecenterofindianaco.org, you can buy a pinwheel right there on our website. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, businesses and organizations can also partner up with you as well? Yes, we have a lot of sponsors this year. Um, We have two levels of sponsorship. We have our gold level and our silver level. And uh, we will have two signs in front of the courthouse uh, displaying all of our corporate sponsorships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so we want to come back and talk with you and with Ashley about about that and about domestic violence overall, and especially as it relates to kids. We also want to talk... Uh, with Jen today about Take Back the Night, which is an annual event at IUP. That uh, Jen, I know you invite the entire community to take yes, part. Yes, definitely we do. Um, this is actually going to be, I believe, we figured it out the 30th or 31st year for Take Back the Night at IUP. It wow. started back in the 90s um, and has been a growing movement. So Take Back the Night is literally a march. It started originally in the 70s um, for women to take the night back to say, you know, we're not standing for sexual violence. We should be able to be out and walk and be able to do these things and be safe. And it's grown into a big movement. So we've been doing that literally for about 30, 31 years, and it's grown every year, and it's completely open to the community, and we encourage everybody to come out. It's Wednesday, April 10th at 6 o'clock. It'll be actually in the Oak Grove, Mm -hmm. and everyone is welcome to come. So you start at 6 in the Oak Grove. Yes. And then it is an actual march. Yes, yes. There's three parts to it. The first part is the empowerment part at the beginning where we encourage everybody to come out. Um, They can join us to make signs for the march. They can do chalking, positive, supportive messages for victims and survivors and people impacted by sexual violence. Um, they, there are lots of different activities for them to look at. WIUPFM will be there playing music along with it for the day. Uh, then we're going to have some empowering words. So we have a few speakers that are going to talk about what is Take Back the Night, why is it so important, how can everybody get involved to make that cultural change so we see the reduction in sexual violence. Um, then everybody gathers at 7 o'clock. We're going to march through campus. Uh, we chant. We have sayings. People have signs really empowering to show our support for those impacted Uh, and then we're going to finish with a survivor reception and speak out where those who have been impacted can come up and share their stories if they are comfortable doing so Mm -hmm. in a room of supportive people so that's that's the whole way from 6 to 9 30 at night yeah and that event the final event takes place at the hub yes at the hub at um 7 30 They'll start with the survivor speak out at 730. In the Ohio room. In the Ohio room, correct. Mm-hmm. And, and as I said, uh, you know, we think of this as an IUP campus event, but you'd like for the whole community to come out and, yes. and be a part of it. Definitely. We encourage everyone to come out um, just to show our support for one another because we know this is an issue everywhere, and we want to, through Sexual Assault Awareness Month, bring that awareness and hope that everybody can step in and be an active bystander to help reduce that so people don't have to deal with that. On a daily basis anymore. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll tell you what let's do. Um, Ashley, let's bring you over to this microphone over here, which seems to want to perform a little bit better. <laughs> and then 
Uh, Jessica, we can put you at that microphone a little closer, and I think we'll be we'll be good to go. Ashley Pasarchik, how are you today? Good. How are you, Todd? Wonderful. Wonderful. Are Are you surprised that thirty years ago was the nineties? <laughs> yeah. Let's not I talk am. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like that hit home with you pretty Just hard. Just a little right? bit. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm here as president of the Domestic Violent Sexual Assault Task Force of Indiana County. Um, the Care Center IUP are just two of the many community members. Um, being that April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the theme this year for that is building connected communities. And I think this is something we excel at in Indiana County. Mm-hmm. We have so many agencies, law enforcement, um, the commissioners, uh, you know, throughout the whole county that show up for us at the, the task force meetings. And it's just all about building a community that we know where to reach out for help. If someone, uh, you know, reaches out to me for something, I can send them to the care center. I can send them, you know, to Alice Paul House or if they're an IUP student to Haven um, or somewhere else. You know, it it just builds those bridges and connects us all together to try to help reduce this. Because communities that have less racism, sexism, ageism, whatever it may be, um, are going to have less violence in whole, sexual violence, domestic violence, child abuse. Yeah. So anything we can do to promote that. So, you know, as the task force, we don't necessarily have events, but we support all the events of our members, and yeah. we want to try to um, make sure we get out there and, and make make sure the community knows about it. And with that kind of history over 30 years now, um, you could actually chart progress, uh, whereas other organizations might have a more difficult time. You can see what sort of things we're doing now as opposed to what happened 15, 20 years ago yeah. and, and see the progress that's being made. Hopefully there yes. is progress. Yes. <laughs> there. And, and I think even if you don't have the numbers right in front of you, if you can look and see how much this community comes together to support causes, to support those in need um, of you know whatever form of abuse or violence that they've suffered, um, I think that speaks volumes, even if the numbers, you know, I don't have those today. Thanks, Todd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I can do to help or not. <laughs> um, but, you know, you see it through the community, and those who do the frontline work can see it every day of, yeah. yeah, you know, violence might be increasing in areas. That's hard to stop. But all we can do as a community is promote mm-hmm. the knowledge that there's help out there, that there's help for, for survivors, for victims, um, and support, and that you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jessica, one of the things about uh, this event coming up, the the, the pinwheel event, uh, mm-hmm. but really the care center as a whole is uh, we can see progress there as well. And it really is also about the community coming together yes. uh, to support children in this case. Yes, 100 percent. And one thing that I'd like to uh, talk about for a minute, because I thought um, mm-hmm. Ash and Jen did a wonderful job talking about how supportive the community is. But I think the thing that's really important is, is that the reason we've made such progress is because we talk about it yep. yes. and we make it safe for people to report it, to talk about it. Everybody talks about all these numbers are exploding, but they're not. The numbers have always been like that. It's just people feel safe to talk about it now yeah. because we make it a safe environment. We believe these kids that come forward. We believe the sexual assault um, survivors. We want to hear what they have to say, and I think that makes all the difference. You bring out into the open what uh, people kept inside of themselves. Yes, 100%. Allowed to continue to poison them for a good long time. Exactly, and that's what we try to do at the Care Center. We want to give kids a safe, neutral, supportive environment to come in and tell their story of abuse and get them into the services that they need so they can go on and recover from, you know, what, what has happened. Um, And I think that, you know, as we go forward, getting those kids the services that they need, listening to what happened to them makes all the difference. You know, even if we can't prosecute the criminal, um, we can still give them that validation. And lift that burden. Yes, 100 percent. And that's why we like this pinwheel garden event so much is because it symbolizes the hope for them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So once again, the pinwheel garden event itself Mm -hmm. is coming up on this Friday, Friday April 5th at noon in front of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Um, And we will still be selling pinwheels um, at the event and throughout the month of April. All right. And so for folks to learn more about that, you said website, right? Yes. You can go to our website, www.indiana, I'm sorry, carecenterofindianaco.org. And uh, you can buy a pinwheel. 
Um, and you can also buy a pinwheel at the event. You can also call our uh, agency, 724-463-8595, and we can help you buy a pinwheel. The Garden of Hope will be there all April, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I just like to point out, too, that the money that gets raised in this event goes directly to kids in Indiana County. Mm-hmm. Um, we keep the funds here. It goes to support our local kids. It doesn't go anyplace else. Yeah, very important. Mm-hmm. Very important. Take Back the Night is Wednesday, April 10th. Begins at 6 in the Oak Grove. Uh, Jen, then it moves uh, through the campus uh, to the hub, and and then the uh, the survivor re- uh, support reception, the speak out, that happens in the Ohio room at 730. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Ladies, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it, it, what a topic uh, and, and one that you could go on and on about. Yeah. Really. Thank you for always having us and making time for us to bring oh, Our pleasure. Here. You want to come back later this month, you do that. Okay. 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 We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All righty. It's Indiana in the Morning. It's WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com.